All right, and here is the deep dive, spoiler-filled discussion of 2018's Hereditary. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you may have gathered from my review there that I did enjoy it, but it was difficult for me as far as a mystery goes. Some key scenes that I want to talk about. Um, the scene towards the end when Tony Collette's character of... Um, Annie is banging her head against the attic door was one of the most visually compelling moments that I can remember in recent times of watching movies. I thought that was brilliant. There was a lot leading up to that uh, that made that work. It wasn't just, you know, a special effects crew working on that two second segment. It was something, you know, that would not have worked if it hadn't been for the entirety of the movie leading up to it. If it hadn't been for Tony Collette's performance, if it hadn't been for all that tension and things ramping up to that point, if it hadn't been for the scene of her hiding in the, in the top corner and, uh, you know, silently wisping out of the room, um, you know, you had a character that you were identified with and that you had, uh, connected with, uh, on both the mother and the son. And now things are taking a hard left turn out of freaking nowhere. And you are dumbfounded at this point. And then she's chasing him. And now this character that you've connected with is now a threat against another character you've connected with, there is an emotional attachment for the audience, at least for me. And so there are stakes and there is, uh, you know, breaking hearts abound going on in this and it's tough to watch, but she's chasing him and he goes up into the attic, whether that's a smart move or not, you know, it's the argument of horror movies for generations here. Let's go upstairs. Let's split up. We can cover more ground that way. Whatever. He goes up into the attic. And then you hear pounding on the door. And it could very easily just be, you know, with the broom, you know, her standing there with the broomstick, you know, let me in. And then it shows her hanging upside down on the ceiling. And again, not pounding on it with her fist, but banging on it with her head. And again, not in a... Uh, rhythm or speed that is humanly possible, but is completely otherworldly. Every element of that leading up to it, every element of it in that moment, I thought was incredible. I know it's a small scene. It, I mean, it, it's it's got to be literally less than one full Mississippi long, but it really got to me. And I don't think that would have been possible to have that hard of a punch if it hadn't been for how it was laid up. So <laughs> some really, really massive kudos there. All of the questions that I thought turned into plot holes, I think that the ending did sufficiently answer, even though I maintain the ending was unsatisfying. Yeah, it answered questions. You know, why was the girl so creepy? You know, I mean, she was, you know, she seemed to have a good heart. She was a good character. We liked her, but at the same time, she's cutting heads off of pigeons and why, and she's turning those into dolls and why, and there's, there's something terribly off about her. Well, okay, now we know why. Not that that's a great explanation, but it's an explanation. We know why. Fine. It's an answer. Um, I think the only thing that I really didn't understand was, I mean, there's a lot of questions thrown around the movie and to the point where I was getting exhausted by them. So I'm probably missing several that uh, maybe have answers, maybe don't, but by this time I was just kind of zoning out. Um, but why, when the book was thrown in the fire, uh, did Gabriel burn? <laughs> burn. Uh, <laughs> that was unintentional. Regardless, uh, you know, okay, fine. The book had a connection with Tony Collette, then why did he light on fire? Uh, that that part to me was a little odd. Um, I was expecting her to burst into flames or something along those lines. Or I I, I was expecting anything except for him lighting on fire because that just it, it didn't seem like the the foundational information that they were providing us would have lent itself to that. 
um, everything else about uh, the grand conspiracy with uh, you know Tony Collette's friend that was giving her support and ultimately was a malevolent force that was answered. A lot of things were answered, but um, <clears throat> it, you know it's just it's not terribly convincing. I guess it, it, it's sufficient enough that I'm not going to look further into it or try to read further into it, but whether I'm happy with it is a whole nother story. Um, the only thing that really kind of, it, it doesn't make me ask questions. It just makes me think about it is how influenced was Tony Collette's character when she insisted on her daughter attending that party? <clears throat> what forces were in play there at that time that conspired against her? Um, you know, how, how organized was this at that point? Were there forces that were manipulating Tony and Colette into doing that? Were there forces that were saying, put nuts in the cake? Was somebody out, you know, putting that thing out on the road? Um, or was it just convenient timing and happenstance that they were able to release their, uh, their demon from the body of this 13 year old girl that was a mistake in the first place? And and at that point, did they capitalize on it? Yeah, I guess that's that's the question that I have is how much uh, the conspiratory forces were in play before Charlie's death versus after Charlie's death. And I pose it to you to answer with your opinions on this. Um, but I would do. I do want to discuss this movie, and I do want to talk about it with you. If you have comments, opinions that differ from mine, opinions that align with mine, uh, whatever, I would love for you to be leaving comments. I will be reading them and replying to them, and otherwise engaging with them. So that should about do it for this deep dive for Hereditary. Uh, I thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>